What if I told you that every Remedy game and all of the characters in them are nothing more than the writings and the imagination of Alan Wake while he was trapped in the dark place? Stick with me. It's going to get weird. Starting in Alan Wake 1 and the bonus content, we'll start the journey outward and try and make sense of the entire Remedy universe, or RCU. In Alan Wake, we start the game in a dream sequence. So yes, it began with a dream. Following a typical nightmare pattern. It appears we have fallen asleep in the passenger seat of our car on the ferry ride to Bright Falls. It is our wife Alice who wakes us up from the dream. Too fast down a coastal road to get there. Alan, wake up! <gasps> Shh, baby, just another nightmare. Everything's fine. You dozed off. Before she wakes right. us up, while still in the dream, is the first time we encounter the Taken, as well as Thomas Zane, who has this to say. For he did not know. That beyond the lake he called home lies a deeper, darker ocean green, where waves are both wilder and more serene. To its ports I've been. To its ports I've been. Two of the most important characters in Quantum Break are Paul Serene and Beth Wilder. The past has already happened. Waves being wilder and more serene is also a great description of the gameplay of Quantum Break. Completely out of control and overwhelming at times, and then all of a sudden everything is calm and it just slows down and stops. The poem ends with the verse, To its ports I've been. Quantum Break takes place in the town of Riverport, where you are surrounded by water, and some major events take place at Port Donnelly Bridge. Is it possible Tom Zane has been to Riverport? If so, how could that have even happened? Keep watching, I'm going to get into Tom Zane in a minute. We live in a room, and there's a poster on the wall. Now I want to point out a truly interesting connection. We stare at it, and we think that's the whole world. And this is the similarity in the opening dialogue of Jesse Faden, and how the picture of Artie on the wall turns into an elevator that lets you into the FBC. The cell, and the poster. In this scene in Alan Wake's dream, where our only escape is past a poster of Tom the Poet that Tom Zane opens for us with the power of light. Tom turns out to be somewhat of a guide for us through the game, and was once involved with a woman named Barbara Jagger. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I Barbara has now become the physical form of the Dark Presence. You got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. The one thing I believe is the dark presence is very real. I hadn't seen her leave, but the old lady was gone. But what it is exactly, I don't know. I believe that Barbara and Tom are purely works of fiction from Alan's mind and do not and did not actually ever exist or live in the real Bright Falls years before Alan's arrival, as we are told. When Alan took the keys from the Dark Presence at the diner, he empowered it with his creative energy and gave it enough power to temporarily manifest a cabin on Cauldron Lake that Alan and Alice arrived at. Wow, it's gorgeous, Alan. It's something, all right. This is likely a copy of the cabin that stood in the same spot years before, but has long been sunk and assumed at the bottom of the lake. This was obviously a trap created by the darkness as the darkness needs an artist to work its will. Part of me believes Alan never woke up and all these events are just a dream. And that is why we hear this at the very end of Alan Wake 1. Alan, wake up. And if that is true, when he did wake up, his writer's block cleared and he found inspiration from his dream of the darkness and the Taken and started writing other books. One of those books is about a woman named Jessie Faden. You called me. But before we get too far off the rails, for argument's sake, let's explore the idea that Alan really was taken to the dark place and the events in Alan Wake 1 are true and exactly as they are perceived on the surface. 
Yes. That would mean that we are supposed to believe that at the end of the game, the moment Alan jumped into the lake to save Alice is the moment Alan was taken by the Dark Presence. And the only other time he was there was during the missing week when the darkness made him write a horror story to take control of Bright Falls. I just don't think any of this is true anymore. Alan was taken to the dark place early and never left. During the first week, he was writing the will of the Dark Presence. And when he started to realize where he was and started fighting off the influence of the darkness, the darkness got a tighter grip on him. And that is when he wakes up after the car crash with the missing week. But what is actually happening here is Alan is changing the story he is writing to a story about himself and making himself into a fictional character, as well as Alice and Barry. So we the player are waking up as a fictional Alan inside a new story, a story in which Alan has written himself as the protagonist. There? During the missing week, we are led to believe Alan was writing for the darkness, possibly writing Departure, and that he wrote himself into the book to escape. The loose sheets of paper were pages from a manuscript entitled Departure. That was the name I planned to use for the next novel I had never gotten started. I was named the author. I hadn't written it. I couldn't remember writing it. In the scene on the page, the hero was attacked by an axe murderer in the woods at night. The supernatural events around us and the battle with the Taken are actually happening because he wrote them into reality. And that is what I believed for a long time. And I think this is what most people believe to be true. That Alan wrote himself free from the dark place and now has to live out the events he wrote during the missing week. He wrote the clicker into the story as a loophole and a way to end the book, but he is still forced to follow the events he wrote until the story is finished. But in the end, he chooses to return to the dark place in exchange for Alice. Again, I don't think any of that's true. Alan was taken to the dark place and he has been there this entire time. It's fictional Alan that is fighting the dark force. Alan even talks to his fictional self through television broadcasts. If the events that we experience actually took place in the town of Bright Falls, the town would be pretty damaged, and it's very unlikely Deerfest would have ever been held that year. And at the end of the game, we see that Deerfest is going on, everyone is in a good mood and celebrating, and the town looks unharmed. Keeping in mind that writers are not bound to tell stories using linear time. A prequel can be written, a story can be erased and rewritten, a hero can be renamed, or a completely new story set in the past or in the future can be started. This is actually pretty important to this theory because it removes a linear timeline of events. Speaking of time, let's go back to Quantum Break for a minute. Early on in Quantum Break, Jack comes across a chalkboard in a lecture hall where the class is studying Alan Wake. On the board, we see characters such as Tom Zane, Robert Jagger, and Barry. There is also a list of three books under the header, Hero's Journey, indicating there's a trilogy of books about Alan Wake. Now in reality, the Hero's Journey is a style of structuring stories originated by Joseph Campbell. It's a structure used by thousands of books and movies. The moment in Quantum Break when we see the chalkboard in the lecture hall raises some questions. Are some of the students that attend Riverport College taking a class that is currently studying the books written by the real Alan Wake? Or are they themselves a world inside of Alan's fiction and studying the adventures of fictional Alan Wake as written by the real Alan Wake? On the surface, it appears Alan exists as a real person in Quantum Break, and this class is studying his writings. But what if Quantum Break is just a story that Alan has written at some point in the dark place trying to escape by manipulating time? Maybe the chalkboard is nothing more than editor's notes or a visual representation of Alan's inner dialogue. There is also the possibility that finding the book written by Alan Wake in Quantum Break suggests Quantum Break is as Remedy says and is not connected, but simply has Alan Wake Easter eggs. Similar to Death Rally being an arcade game in American Nightmare. But I would not put it past Remedy to publish a false statement just to mess with our heads. Alex Casey is a character written by Alan Wake. But Alex Casey is clearly Max Payne. Alan! Alan, please check the fuse box! This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge, it had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. So why would he have a different name? 
I believe Alex Casey was the inspiration for the character Max Payne, and not Max Payne himself. Alex Casey is a character in a series of popular novels authored by Alan. So it would make sense that the success of the Alex Casey stories spawned a series of graphic novels and that their success may have inspired the creation of a video game. The name Alex Casey being kind of boring would have been changed to Max Payne as this would be much more interesting and appealing for the name of a graphic novel and a video game. Similar to how Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was changed to the Sorcerer's Stone. In Max Payne, we get this message. You're in a graphic novel. Shortly followed by this one. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a computer game, Max. By the time we get to the AWE content in control, we can see Alan is actually writing the story of Jesse. There was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man. A hunger in the dark. AWE, which stands for Altered World Events, could also be thought of as Alan Wake Events, which are all stories he is creating. If we jump back to Quantum Break again, we realize Beth is experiencing an AWE and has been most of her life. But is that AWE an Altered World Time Event? is breaking down. The end is coming and Joyce could be the key. Or just a story that Alan is writing. As Jack, just before we travel back in time in an attempt to stop the end of time, we see AWE sprayed on a wall near Ground Zero in an elaborate graffiti, just above the area the time machine is being kept. Upon returning to the past, we learn Jack's brother William had been involved in a street art and graffiti project that Jack knew nothing about. What's going on here? Since when did Will run a graffiti workshop? By the time we get to American Nightmare, it has already been established that Alan Wake was a writer on Night Springs before his career really took off as a novelist. American Nightmare is nothing more than a Night Springs story written by Alan while he is still trapped in the dark place in yet another attempt to write himself out of the darkness. Night Springs doesn't exist. It's a fictional town from the TV show I used to work on. It was Any Place USA a place we used as a backdrop for whatever strange story we had that week. One of the stories I wrote for the show involved a man, the champion of light, fighting his evil double, the herald of darkness. It was something I'd written back in the real world, something I had a link to, a framework I could build on. I had adapted it into a new story. This story. Never quite getting it right and having to rewrite the story as we play through, each reset in American Nightmare is essentially Alan scrapping the story and rewriting it. You remember me? Kind of. I felt weird all day, like I could almost remember a dream I had. And then, just before sunset, I remembered the page. Yeah. When we look at Mr. Scratch, he makes his first appearance in Alan Wake 1, where Thomas Zane tells us that he will be our replacement while we are gone. Mr. Scratch is actually the fictional alter ego of the fictional Alan. The satellite signal in American Nightmare could very well be a different representation of the idea that is Tom Zane. Tom talks about needing a stronger signal to be able to connect with Alan during the bonus content in Alan Wake 1. But Tom Zane is not even real. Tom Zane is the moments of clarity and sanity of Alan that are fighting the dark influence. You represent the part of Alan Wake that is capable of rational thought and planning, which is why I'm talking to you. The real Alan is writing Tom, and at times he is writing about Tom writing about the fictional Alan. Who are you? But it's all just Alan in the dark him? place. Your friend Tom. Tom Zane. The same can be said of Mr. Scratch, possibly a manifestation of Alan's anger and frustration. Mr. Scratch doesn't play by the rules Alan feels bound to, so it makes sense that in the dark place he would write this story. The idea being that the fictional Alan would defeat Mr. Scratch, and this would somehow free him from the dark place and he would get his wife and his life back. Alan separates himself into fictional versions of himself with awareness and consciousness that are all part of Alan and all with the same motivation to end the story by saving a person who needs saving. But like any good horror or psychological story, there is never an end, or at least the ending is always left with some doubt. In Alan Wake 1 and in the bonus content, he is trying to save himself from the dark place, but each of those Alans always has to pay a price that do not allow them to free themselves from the dark place.
because he believes he has to follow the rules of writing and that everything has to come at a price. In the end of Alan Wake 1, the price is giving himself to the darkness to save Alice. In the bonus content, the price is the restoration of Alan's sanity. But that still doesn't lead him to freedom. It just leads him to realizing where he is and what's really going on, and that he is trapped. Tom Zane gives Alan the flashlight and a gun. He is a fictional character, but he is created by the real Alan Wake through the fictional Alan Wake, collaborating with Tom Zane about a diver descending into the darkness. The poet, the diver, you, you look different. That was just a, a role, a character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker, an old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. For the purpose of being able to exist inside the darkness and help guide Alan. Words are Alan's only true weapon, but he thinks he has to follow these rules of balance as he writes, which keeps him trapped from truly being able to write himself free. Although, I don't think it's possible for him to write his true self free regardless. In Alan Wake bonus content, we are again experiencing Alan Wake writing himself as the protagonist, where he can use actual words as literal weapons by shining light on them. He wrote Dr. Hartman into the story to try and explain the darkness as a psychological disorder, or maybe defeat the darkness by explaining it away. Don't fight it. I... But that is too easy, and it didn't work. So he abandoned the Doctor character in Alan Wake 1. And later he wrote the Doctor into another book about a director named Jesse Faden, where we discover the Doctor willingly became imbued with the darkness by jumping into Cauldron Lake. But Control is just another story written by Alan inside the Dark Place, and he's using Jesse as his protagonist. Us, I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. In the AWE content of Control, where Alan himself starts to bleed over and become more aware he is just writing a book, Jesse is written to kill the darkness-infected Doctor and to put an end to both the hiss and the darkness, as well as destroying the representation of possible mental illness. But this is sloppy writing. This is Alan being desperate. He is trying to resolve too much all at once. He thinks once Jesse stops the hiss and the darkness and takes back control of the Bureau, he can start a new story. Or be free. Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But Investigations needs someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to Sector Heads, ma'am. No thank you. Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown. There shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes. But like all of Alan's characters, there is no end to control because Alan himself is still trapped. Alan is left to write. Jesse is left to an endless maintenance job. Jack inherits the time sickness and is left with the same choice Paul Serene faced. And Max is stuck reliving the same loop of loss, love, revenge, redemption, and addiction. So in all of this, what really happened to Alice? That's actually a hard question to answer. In Control, we hear about Alice being debriefed by the Bureau and that she has little memory of the time during the events of Alan Wake 1. But if Control is nothing more than a story, this is simply Alan trying to comfort himself that Alice is still alive and out there. Alice is either still being kept by the dark place, she died, or she was released and has moved on with her life. It is also possible she was never taken by the dark presence and that it was a trick the entire time. With all the theories out there, you can find a hole in every single one of them when you start connecting the games. And it gets especially confusing when you look at the events of the game Control. However, if we accept that the only truth is that Alan has been stuck in the dark place for what would be 13 years now, and he never escaped, and everything we experience are just his writings, then things actually do start to make sense. 
with Alan Wake 2 just a few days away, I can't wait to see if my theory holds up at all or if I'm completely wrong. Either way, I can't wait. And actually, I hope I'm wrong because I want Remedy to do what they always do and that's really mess with my mind and make me question what's going on in the game. Which makes me wonder, is Alan Wake just writing our realities right now? Aaron sits in a dark room. The only light is that from the monitors in front of him, a pupil-piercing glare. He thinks, maybe this will be the one, the video that makes this channel blow up. And yet only 0.02% subscribe. Do people not know how much work goes into content creation? Do they not understand pushing a simple subscribe or like button where leaving a comment can make all the difference to a creator? In a world where everything is digital and free, maybe they just don't think about it. A slight sense of melancholy overcomes him. Suddenly a sharp pain, like a needle being pressed outward from behind his eyes, temporarily blind. As things come back into focus, he sees shadows dance across the room. A dark figure appears in the doorway. Surely this is just his imagination. The double click of his mouse opens a video editor. There's no going back now. 